Uh, Mr. Gilstrap, do you have a Perry Como story? I do have a Perry Como story. I was in the Perry Como Christmas special, a colonial Christmas, I think it was called, early American Christmas, shot in 1978. It was John Wayne's last film performance. And, and you had an interaction with Mr. Wayne. I, I did, and with Perry Como, for that matter. It, there's a, the, and there's a, in Williamsburg, Colonial Williamsburg, there's Chowning's Tavern, which opened at like 4 in the morning, 5.30, when we were shooting this thing. And um, it's, a, it's a, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and there's a big toast at the end. Well, everybody had flagons of real beer. And after like 12 takes, everybody was hammered. And, <laughs> and, and Perry Como could barely complete a sentence. So, which, was, which was all very fun. And John Wayne kept getting angrier and angrier because this was not exactly the most professional thing he had been involved with. So when it was finally done and it was wrapped, I mean, this is John Wayne. And so I, I come up to him and I said, Mr. Wayne, I've been a fan my, my whole life. Could I have your autograph? And he said, no. <laughs> And he walked out. Really? So yeah, Perry Como, however, did scrawl. You know, he wrote it on your back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he signed your leg. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but it's so scribbled, nobody believes you when exactly. you tell this Perry Como's exactly. autograph. Oh, yeah, that's a preschooler that side. Actually, it was I, I don't, <coughs> this. It, it, it happened, so it's it's real. My mom was absolutely over the moon that I was a part of this and sure. that I had met Perry Como. Right, so. Um, and as it would happen, because of the beer, there are bathroom breaks. And, and Perry Como, I, I, I mentioned to my mother that, that I peed next to Perry Como. And there, was, and there was, no wait, and there's a silence. And my mother said, and? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a mom. Oh my. That's not how it works. This is 2023. So, John, this is like a PG and, show. I know. I didn't say anything bad. I'm just, I'm talking about my, you know. Hey, she just said and. Yeah. You can leave that up to interpretation yeah. as to what you think about. By the way, Perry Como, born in the same town as Maria Lawrence in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. Our guest in this segment, Stacy Roan from the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Eastern Panhandle with a big announcement. Stacy, Merry Christmas. Good morning to you. Hi, Merry Christmas to you and good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, John. Good morning. So. What you got? I, I, well, I'm curious because one of our um, one of our donors was possibly going to jump on the line. Nothing so yet. So not yet? Nothing yet. Okay. Can we talk about something else just in case she <laughs> she does come on? Because I want to give her the opportunity to share the good news. I'll give you 60 so. seconds. Okay. Well, I have a different event that I can talk about for yeah, a go minute ahead. if that's okay. Absolutely. So on, um, on Sunday, December 24th at the Neon Moon um, Tavern, it, it was the old pump house out on 45. Right. One of our alumni has taken that business in partnership. I think he's, he's in partnership um, and George Nunn has offered to do a breakfast. So it's a breakfast brunch on December 24th from 9 until 1, and all the proceeds from that event will come to the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, he's, a, he's a firm believer in the Boys and Girls Club, helped to develop him into a young leader. And I'm going to say young leader because we're the same age. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, and, but you are, and you are young. In, in thank you. Thank you. I'm, try, young. I'm trying to still be young. Um, but, but anyway, so um, George grew up in the club and said, you know, Stacy, we're trying to figure out some ways that we can give back to the club. And it's really near and dear to my heart. And um, when he called and said, hey, I have an idea. I said, okay, lay it on me. What, what can we do? Uh, he's like, you know, we'd like to do a brunch. And do you think that some of your team can come in and volunteer and help us like celebrity serve and stuff? And I'm like, yeah, sure, we can pull that together. And then he called me back and he said, wait, all of my staff want to volunteer. I'm like, wow. So their whole team has really come together to provide this breakfast and brunch. And Rob, I sent you the the flyer in yes. text. And so, Co Colin, I just sent that to you. So if you can get that posted on TV at your uh, next earliest convenient moment, that'd be awesome. Awesome. And I think based on the response, we might need to be thinking about some reservations. So um, there's some contact information on that flyer. And if you're interested in coming to brunch with us, I'll be there all morning and would look forward to sharing a little bit more about the club and what we do. Okay. So. Now, I don't think Shamika is going to be able to call. Okay. That's okay. So then you might want to just go ahead and get I'm, the announcement. I'm happy to talk about this. So back in, I guess it was August, September timeframe, we started talking with CMA Autos or Carter Meyer Autos, um, their whole 
Easter or their whole conglomerate here in um, the Eastern Panhandle and also in Winchester about, hey, we want to do Orange Saturday during the month of November, and every $25 uh, or every car that's sold will donate $25 to the Boys and Girls Club. Awesome. And we're like, that's fantastic. And initially, you know, going in, I thought, okay, the Martinsburg store, this is this is wonderful. And then they brought in the other, um, the Dodge dealership over on Kelly Island Road. And then as we went further and further along, um, Winchester was also included in with that group. And it was, it was the most heartwarming opportunity to meet with donors and talk about what we do and, um, and the check presentation. We ha- so we had that at CMA um, in Toyota here in Martinsburg. And it, mm-hmm. you're waiting for the dollar amount, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when she, I'm, I'm leading up to this because when <laughs> she called to tell me what the dollar amount was, I said, Shamika, you're going to have to tell me that number again. Now, what were you expecting? Um, I don't know what I was expecting. I think at one point she said, oh, we, I think we set a goal for about 7500 And when she told me the number, it kind of blew me away. It was $25,000, oh. which was so very needed because we, you know, we're growing. Our our operation continues to grow, and the the needs continue to grow. So when when she said that number, I was I was floored, and it, you know it was it was just really heartwarming to go out and spend some time with them. They had their general managers from all of the all of the stores, and um, and then on Sunday, Rick and I had the opportunity to DJ for one of the one of the site's um, Christmas parties, and that was the the Subaru dealership in. Um, in Winchester and we you know I was able to thank their employees too and I think that's always important to that it trickles down not just to management but their whole team so they could really understand what we do and embrace the work that they supported that's awesome so $25 a car $25,000 they sold a thousand cars and Toyota well Toyota pitched in 10,000 so that was so that was an additional gift and Toyota has a national partnership with boys and girls clubs they support a lot of our work with teens and um, and it, you know it's just been a wonderful relationship but for that impact to hit here locally you know sometimes you'll read about you know national partnerships with boys and girls clubs and hey why don't you get Denzel in here and I'm like well our, our closest Denzel is Kevin Knowles <laughs> <laughs> And that doesn't work. Who also grew up in a boys and girls club, um, but so anyway, we you know, it was it it was just really heartwarming to see their whole organization come together. Um, the Carter Myers organization um, was was recently um, the the I guess the granddaughter of the founder is now the the CEO. And she is the president of the Boys and Girls Club in Charlottesville. So there's a great, there's already a great affinity to Boys and Girls Clubs, and we're just grateful to be the beneficiary of that love. Well, that's amazing. Congratulations! Uh, right now on the screen, uh, Colin has the Neon Moon Tavern uh, flyer up there, by the way. And uh, again, that's Christmas Eve, 9 a.m. to 1 at the Neon Moon Tavern. And if you follow, if you follow our Facebook, and I'm going to encourage, we need a we need a stronger following. Um, people in our community really need to know what we do. So please, if you're a Facebook user, please go to the Boys and Girls Club of the Eastern Panhandle, mm-hmm. like our page, share share our work. The only way that we can tell our story to a broader audience is if more people than just our staff, our board, and, and myself, if we're all out there sharing the word about what's happening in the club. So I noticed that th- there's no price on that. So there is there is a menu, and I'll, that'll also be on our, I can also put that on our website, and he's posted that out there. The meals are, most of them are under $10. So, um, for so if somebody like myself mm-hmm. who travels for Christmas, that's not going to be in the area, but wanted to participate in that fundraising event, there's nothing on that flyer that says how they can do that. So we can edit that. We can cause, Because that came, um, George created that, so I can talk to him and say, hey, can you put our website on there? And that's another way that folks can, can support us um, in, in a one-time only or an ongoing capacity. I know I talked a little bit last time I was in about – um, making a monthly gift and it's automated so if you make a gift on our website you can select an automated annual or an, an automated monthly gift or um, the other neat feature is roundup 
I have um, on our credit card, it's attached to our link to the Boys and Girls Club Roundup event. And every month, I, you know, I set a limit of how much I want to spend each month to mm-hmm. round up to. And then at the end of the month, I get a text that says, you know, this month you've donated however many dollars to Roundup. So it's just an easy way that is, is relatively painless, um, and it happens automatically. Uh, so that's that's another way. And our website is bgcepwv.net. Boys and Girls Clubs, Eastern Panhandle, West Virginia. Great, great mm-hmm. organization. I, I can't speak more highly enough of the work that Stacy does for the Eastern Panhandle uh, with the Boys and Girls Club. And, and I've had opportunities to work with her in the past, and... Uh, just, you know, you guys are doing great stuff. I'm Thank glad you. to hear about CMA. Uh, is that now going to be a, a yearly event in November? You know, we're going to attend that relationship and hope that that continues. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, it, if we can make that happen year over year, what a gift that would be. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Johnny. I, is this time of year busy or more bu- busier for you or slower for you when you get into the holidays? It, I think it's busier, and in part because you know we're gearing up. We do take some time off over the holidays. Our staff go you know full speed ahead throughout this this fall season and into the winter, and we're we're gearing up for even more after the holidays. So we like to give them a little bit of downtime. And one of the so one of the things that we talked about last time I was on John and I and I felt like I needed to give you a little bit more information and we maybe just didn't have the time, um, but we talked about trauma informed practices and trauma informed care and the training that some of our staff have gone through here in the past um, couple months, and you know it sounds like a buzzword, right? You know mm-hmm. people throw out different different practices or philosophies and you're like is that is that the new buzzword for this or that um, and it, and really there's been an evolution of how trauma impacts um, not only the child that is in the middle of the trauma but it impacts their family like their core family group their group that they connect within the clubs and then ultimately it comes back to the staff you know our our team deals with a lot of heavy stuff and then they have to go home and process like oh my gosh I wonder what's going on with that kid tonight, or I wonder what's happening, or what how that child's day is going to be tomorrow, and what do I expect to see when they walk through the doors of the club? And you know, knowing knowing how to internalize it a little bit for yourself, and and you know, we always say self care. You know, you need to take good care of yourself, but how do you do that? So with a trauma informed practice, it takes the adult mentor that's working with a child and helping them to figure out, okay, how, not only you need to take care of yourself, but how are you going to take care of yourself? And then it breaks it down to at that family level. And what we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of relative caregivers. So grandparents that had no, I don't want to say no desire, but they had no expectation that they were going to be raising their children's children because their children are either not here or not able to care mm-hmm. for them. So, and sometimes, I, like one of and, and the reason that I wanted to come back is, around to this is because I got to watch it in the club the other day. Like I got to see it. And sometimes I'm a process person. I have to be in the middle of it and understand it before I can come back and explain it. Uh, so we have this this little family. It's not a little family. It's actually there are six kids in the in the core family group from two different families, but all like relative. Um, and there's a relative caregiver in the mix. And it's interesting to see the dynamic of the two different families when they come together and then when they bring that to the club and then it expands out to other kids in the club who are experiencing trauma and it's like the domino effect so if you need to cut me off i I do i'll shut up for a minute (laughs) can i come back to this though Uh, we're out of time I'm done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fast. just 50 seconds to say goodbye at, uh, at oh, the end of the sorry. segment here. So anyway, uh, we're back with a final minute. It goes fast, doesn't it? It does. Uh, 